about me but I'm coming in a greater measure there's more coming it's not just about what we're singing today but I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying I did do it in the day of Pentecost and I will do it again in the days to come of what the days that we're living in right now he's coming and he's going to do it again he's going to do it again he's going to do it again it's going to happen again Thank you, Jesus. I came and I'm coming. That's what I feel like he's saying. I came and I'm coming again in a greater measure. You carry me already inside you. The Holy Spirit is inside of you, but he's coming and he's going to come in a greater measure and it's going to overflow. You're not going to be able to contain it. It's going to go out and out and out and out. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
What a special morning. Wow. The song, The Goodness of God. It's special for us. It was a song that we sang at a, my mother's funeral, Esther's funeral, uh, Esther's mother's funeral. The goodness of God. My mother, when she was a hundred, told me a story again 
There's a time when I was a little, little fella. I was still in the cot. I didn't get out of that cot until I could reach both ends. But one morning I, I went to get out of bed and I just crumbled on the floor. My legs didn't work. People prayed. And they prayed. The doctor came. Maybe I had polio. Didn't quite know. And then my mother told me this story. I've got my recollections, but this is what she told me. She said, you came to me the one morning. And I remember crawling on the floor. I remember having making a little cubby around the kitchen table with toilet paper all wrapped around it. And I, and I said to mum, Jesus told me that I wouldn't be healed today, but tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, that I would get up and I would run down the corridor. And my mum said that frightened me because I didn't want you to be disappointed. And you know, that next morning, I got up and I ran down that corridor. It's the childlike faith that we need. All the inhibitions of life that we hold on to as we grow up restrict us in what God can do for us. What is man that you are mindful of? But you know, in God's perspective, even though we might look like specks of sand, he says, I number, I know the number of hairs on your head. He's intimately involved in us. Let's look at things from God's perspective, not from ours. God is a miracle-working God. He is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Eric, for sharing. Praise God. Can we just give like just a few seconds, a few minutes? Just praise God. Lord, we praise you for your goodness. Lord, we are so grateful that you are so good to us, Lord. Father, your goodness follows us all the days of our lives. We can't outrun your goodness, Lord. You are so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, during that worship time, I was just thinking... I'm not as um, prepared as some, but sometimes I'm like, Holy Spirit, would you just show me what you want me to say? (laughs) I'm just being really honest. And God was like, just speak of my goodness. And then we sang the goodness of God. And then Eric gets up and shares about the goodness of God. And I really felt in my heart that God wanted to say to us this morning, all of us, me and myself included, that his goodness, it never goes away. It literally follows us everywhere we go. We actually can't escape it. We can't, we can run as far as we want to, as fast as we want to, but it will never, it will always overtake us. And I felt like there's someone who specifically needed reminding this morning that God is faithful in His goodness. He's so faithful in His goodness all the time. When we're not faithful, because we're not faithful all the time, because we're human, but God is faithful all the time. There's never a time where He is not faithful to us. And like you said, Eric, we're mere human. And that sounds like we're not putting ourselves down because God created us and He loves humans. He loves us. He wanted relationship with us. He created us to have relationship with us. But sometimes we are human. We're not God. And He is God and He is faithful all the time. So Father, we thank You for Your goodness. 
We thank you for your faithfulness. Oh, Lord, we are so grateful and we're so thankful. Thank you, Jesus. We might come around the table of communion while we're in this lovely atmosphere. Tom, would you like to come up and share with us? I get to call him Cuzzy. <laughs> Thanks, Cuz. Thank you, Cuz. Well, good morning, church. What an awesome um, testimony that was, Eric. I'm just going to build on that one a little bit, mate, because um, I had a miracle happen to me as well. Um, back in 2015, um, my aorta burst. I was um, declared dead three times on the way to hospital, but I was revived again each time and I finally got to Ipswich and they uh, stabilised me and then took me to the PA. I spent seven weeks in a coma. I was 17 hours on the operating table to start with. Seven weeks in a coma. And um, when I came out of that coma, I discovered I was a paraplegic. I couldn't feel anything from my waist down um, from the loss of blood. When my aorta burst, I'd become a paraplegic. They told me I'd never walk again. I'd be a vegetable. I'd be on dialysis for the rest of my life. That's if I lived. And, um, yeah, um, have you got that slide up there, please, uh, guys? Yeah, and... Um, that's, that's me, Greggy, in, in my wheelchair, mate. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, Pastor Jane from, from the church I was attending. And uh, she visited me when I was in a coma and she put a uh, uh, scripture up on my whiteboard. All things are possible through Christ who strengthens us. And, and I lived by that scripture for six months while I was in there. And um, they were teaching me to get on public transport in my wheelchair and how to, how to do stuff around the home and look after myself. And um, a lady from the church that I was attending at the time came to visit me in hospital. And um, she prayed. We prayed together. And she prayed over me and um, went on her way. And she wouldn't have been out the front door of the hospital and I saw my big toe move under the sheet. I, st I still couldn't feel anything, but that was all, uh, that's all that I needed to get me motivated. And, um, you know, that, uh, that spurred me on. And I, and I walked out of that hospital six months later, albeit, but I walked out on crutches. Uh, I'll just tell you a few things along the way what happened. Um, I was living up, up on a hill and there was a real gravelly track. You had to have a four-wheel drive to get there. And just before I, I passed out, before I came, um, became unconscious, I, I knew to tell the ambulance to bring a four-wheel drive. And they did that. Um, my daughter, 14-year-old daughter, I found out later on, had put scriptures under my mattress. She, uh, she, she was studying to be a pastor at the time and um, she said she knew that one of her parents was, was in trouble, you know. And, um, yeah, so she put, put scriptures under my mattress and um, praise God, it's no wonder that I'm still here today with all the things that happened along the way. Um, and it's only by the blood... It's only by the blood. All I had to do, the only part I had in it was to believe. To believe that Jesus died for me on the cross, you know, and, and his blood ran down for me to be healed. And, um, yeah, it was great. And uh, I, I kept recovering. I'm still recovering today, but I found Harvest Point. Praise God, I found Harvest Point Church. I found Wendy and um, living in divine health and, wow, I found out so much more about healing. 
So I'd just like to encourage anybody here, you know, if you've got any niggly little things, get along to living in divine health. <laughs> um, yeah, but... Yeah, I'd just like to say that miracles, miracles come in cans. Joyce Meyer says that miracles come in cans. I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. I can have that better job at work. I can do anything that I want to do. Yeah. Um, I just want to uh, read this bit that Joyce Meyer, she's, I love Joyce Meyer. Suffering is one of the most difficult things to understand in life and in Christianity. We know that God is good and we know that he sees everything and is all-powerful. But why does he allow us to suffer, especially unjustly? This question has been asked by millions throughout the ages. Why, God, why? God does not delight in our sufferings, but he is honoured and pleased when we endure it with a good attitude. Trust requires unanswered questions. If we knew all the answers, faith would not even be necessary. Some of the people become angry at God when tragedy or extreme difficulty comes their way. This is the worst thing anyone can do because he is the only one who can help us. Yeah. One man I know endured a tragic experience of watching his only son die of cancer. Afterward, he bitterly asked God, where were you when my son died? God replied, the same place I was when mine died. <laughs> Hallelujah. The true test of faith is how we, be, how we behave during trials and tribulations, especially ones we feel are totally un, unfair. Peter said that the fiery ordeals will come to test the quality of our faith and that we are not to be amazed and bewildered. bewildered. Instead of being concerned about why you suffer, just make a decision to get through it with a great attitude and you will see God work everything together for good. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, I, and uh, that's exactly what he's doing in my life now. He's turned it around for good. I get to tell my testimony and how, how great he's worked in my life. So, um, yeah, ever, other... Other people are benefiting from it now. So, um, yeah, I just, I just don't have any trouble at all celebrating the blood of Jesus. So I'd like you all now to partake. Thank you, Lord. The body of Jesus broken broken for me, broken, smashed to pieces, unrecognisable, so that I could be healed. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And the blood, the blood that ran down that cross for us and for our salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the price you paid, Lord. Hallelujah. There you go, Greggy. You'll be up and out of mate in no time. Thank you, Tom. Wasn't that powerful? Just before Tom goes, or put his books down. Tom, put your books down. Come back here. That'll be good. <laughs> Well, uh, who's receiving something this morning from the living God, eh? Isn't it wonderful? I just wanted Tom to come and place his hands upon Greggy here. I'm not sure if everyone could see. Maybe down the back they couldn't see this morning, but Greggy's got up twice today, pushed himself up out of the chair. Four times, they tell me. Unaided, standing up. So I just want to acknowledge today, and there he is, straight up. Yeah. And I wanted just Tom to believe God with Greggy because we saw Tom in the picture there in the wheelchair. 
Okay, that's where he's been. This is a man now. And this is where this man is, but he's not going to be there forever. Amen. God's power. So I want you to release your faith right now. Tom, you pray. Just release, your, release the power of God into Greggy right now. Well, Father God, we just lift Greggy up to you, Father. We know that those miracles come in cans, Father. And, and we just say, release one on Greggy, Father God. We know his faith. His faith will see him through, Father God, and he will walk again. He will um, hold his loved ones and walk with them, Father God. He'll walk down the aisle of this church, Father. Hallelujah. That that wheelchair, Greggy, you'll be like me. Throw it away, mate. Yep. And Jesus, we just know it's only because you died on that cross for us that we can... We can be saved, and not, not just in physical life. We know we can go on forever into eternity, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. Hey, come on, give God praise right now. Because God is doing a mighty work. And I just want to thank God for this family, and I want you to continue to believe God with me. Amen. This man will walk to church one day. He'll not walk to church, but he'll walk in from his motor car. You knew what I mean, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So thank you for the faith that's in the house today. Thank you for the belief that's in the house today as we believe God together, amen. Come on, we're going to see this happening. And you know, Sandy saw when she gave the tongues this morning, she saw and it was already in the prophetic word from Maddie today, the tongues of fire will be upon the people of God in this house, amen. And not only will you not see it in this room, but you'll see it from the rooftop. And the people driving by will see the fire of God upon your lives. As people hop out of wheelchairs, as the, as the lame walk, amen, as the deaf hear, the blind see, to the glory of the living God. Father, we thank you. This is a move of God today in this region. And we give you praise as you save people. Lord, you're willing to save to the uttermost those that call upon your name today. And we give you praise. We give you honor today. And you know what Sandy saw was she saw the cars were seeing the fire from miles away. And they were lining up to come to the fire of the living God. So, Father, we humbly sit and stand before your presence today, knowing that this is a work of the move of God today, not of man, not by the Spirit of man, God says, but by my Spirit, says God, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against the church of the living God. Hallelujah. Because God's Spirit is greater, and God will have His way. We see this, we see Greggy hopping up and down, hopping up and down, unaided. He's getting stronger and stronger by the week. So, Father, we thank you. Just as Eric said, it wasn't today, but it'll be tomorrow. And whatever day tomorrow is for Greggy, Father, we thank you for the power of the living God surges through every fiber, every muscle, every nerve of his body right now in Jesus' name. We give you praise today. We give you glory in this house. In Jesus' glorious name. Hello. Hello. Where'd you come from? Hi, I'm very new. Ah. Um, I'm Michelle. And you were like, I'm standing behind you and I'm going to keep this together. I'm not going to cry. I've got this. Um, but I have a beautiful word for him. Can I pray for him? Excellent. Would you mind if I can pray? Amato. Lovely, lovely. Hi, Harvest Church, Don Michelle. New here. I'm having a great time so far. Very, very bold, but I got this. God's got this. God's got this. Not me. God's got this. Oh, see, la da 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 you use my boldness and my courageous and my spontaneous personality. And I see Greg and I see all these beautiful people standing together, Lord. And Father, you say when one more person or two more people gather here on earth and believe with everything that we got, it is possible. All things are possible to those who believe in Christ. And that scripture, that scripture has been with me since I was 15. And it's got me through times of trouble. I've seen people get up out of wheelchairs. The church that I've come from and been born into. But this is my new church. 
and harvest. Oh, I thank you, Lord God, as we all just come together right now. And we just agree for Greg right now. And we lay our hands upon him and we stretch out. Father, there is no favouritism in you. Father God, we just cry. As this man stands here beside you as a solid giant because he wears your armour. He wears your armour with boldness. You're going to rise, Greg, up. You're going to put the armour of Christ on him. The helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. The belt of truth. The skirt of protection. The sandals of sturdiness. Give him power. Give him strength, Lord. Anything that we shall ask for, Father, in your name. Jesus has already paid the price. Death. We have, he has victory over death. He has paid the price. He has fought the powers in hell. Greg is healed in the name of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus runs through this man. And Father God, we just agree, Father, and we get excited. Because we know when we come together as a family with boldness and compassion and love, Father. You teach us, you disciple us. But most of all, Father, you forgive us, Father, and each and every day we have new glory, new blessings, new grace. That's why we get excited for the goodness of Christ. And Sunday is the day of victory. The Sunday is the day of rest. I thank you, Father God, for, for Greg right now, Father for the blood of Jesus to run through him and let him just rest on you and let him just keep saying, thank you, Lord God, I am healed. It is out of my hands and when it is your timing, it will be done and I will get up when you tell me it is time. A childlike faith, that's all we need. A first love when we first came to Christ. Remember your first love, Greg. Remember your first love. Come to the throne of Christ with your first love in your heart and he shall see and hear you each and every time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, let's all stand to our feet this morning. Thank you, Michelle. Let's all stand up just for one moment. Give God praise. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We give you honour. We magnify you today. We bless your name. 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 We bless your holy name today. We rejoice in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think just receive that today, Greggy. <laughs> you know what he said to me earlier? Just as a, by the way, the power of God's working there. Amen. Did you hear me? The power of God's moving in his life powerfully. Greg, he said, I'm going to build a new house. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He said, I built one. He said, I'm going to build another one. Yes. He said, I enjoy picking out all the things to put in it and how to do it and what it looks like. Come on, somebody. You can get excited today. Amen. Yeah. I just said his testimony, or one of them, many testimonies today. Amen. That's the power of the living God working his life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I know you want to talk, don't you? Ah, oh, man. Fire hydrant, please. <laughs> Bless you, Mark, for giving me the mic week after week. Praise God. Just a, a little add-on to what Eric said and also Tom what an inspiration you are to just you are as you are an inspiration to me mm. i will become an inspiration to others yeah. i think we'll do a national tour telling our story together we'll get a big taylor swift bus <laughs> we need a driver truck driver ray can drive <laughs> you lucky man 
We've got uh, volunteers to drive the bus. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'll get the bus before I build the house, Mark. <laughs> so, well, that was wonderful what Errol said about, uh, Eric, sorry, said about childlike faith. Yeah. And uh, maybe I'm not very good at complying to the rules. <laughs> I keep, keep breaking the rules. I'm not very good at listening, listening to authority. So when they tell me I'm not going to make it, I'm like, I'm not interested in your version of the truth. It is not my truth. And I keep learning, like coming to this church, I keep learning about my journey and healing. Just talking to Ray this morning, I had a realization. See, the devil, he thought I was a threat to his existence. He tried to take me out. He knows what I'm going to do in the future. Mm. Converting so many people to Jesus. And uh, life is so much better when you are filled with the love of God and uh, filled with the breath of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And uh, so many people will, will benefit from the devil trying to take me out. Silly devil. <laughs> Made a big mistake. God said, hold my beer, I'll fix this problem. <laughs> so here I am, taking the devil down. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Mark. God bless you. Wonderful. Yay for Greggy. Woo! Someone say, we're taking the devil down. <laughs> That's your fact, he's already down. We're just enforcing the defeat, aren't we? Hallelujah. Bless you, Greggy. Isn't it great to see the strength? And you hear his language changing week to week as God revitalizes and renews his mind and soul with the Spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We know the devil's defeated, but you know, we're enforcing the victory. That's why it appears that when he, when he, when he arises in an individual, we see the power of God take it over. Amen. And destroy. Speed up the defeat. Speed up the defeat. He is defeated and we're speeding up his demisal here on earth. Someone shout, he's losing today. But Jesus wins. Someone shout, Jesus wins. Someone shout, Jesus is winning. I know it doesn't look like it sometimes, but someone shout, Jesus is winning. Hallelujah. Look at the Olympic Games. You say, God, where are you? Hello? Someone say, he's there. It's devastating, diabolical that men be allowed to pose as women and punch the lights out of a dear lady posing as a woman but being a man. Come on, it's diabolical that we allow this to happen in the world. But come on, we're believing God today for a breakthrough in the nations. I mean, we're believing God for a breakthrough in Australia. As we withstand darkness, we withhold the power of the devil. That's why we're withholding the power of darkness that's trying to grip this man and silence him. But Farmer Greg, he's arising. Come on, church, we as a nation need to arise. Come on, how long will we go along allowing people to pose as something else when they're not that? And say, that's okay. It's not okay. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are humble before Him today, amen. But before Him, we have boldness today. Say, that's not acceptable for a man to oppose as a lady and snop the lights out of a woman. In the name of sport, what rubbish? It's rubbish. Someone say, it's rubbish. Come on, some of you need to get aggressive with that because the devil has to go down. Righteousness has to declare. Mando platala baranda la mo so corianda. So I said, I wouldn't say that, Pastor Mark. Someone's going to say it. Someone has to say it. I'm not just talking about. I'm not posting online. I don't go online writing little blurbs, but I'll sell it to the atmosphere. I'll talk to you today. We'll talk to online today. We'll talk to somebody, amen, that this is unacceptable. We believe God, God made man and woman, hallelujah. And sport needs to be fair between the same sexes, hallelujah. 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 Say, leave it alone, pastor. No, let's go for it. <laughs> 
Jesus is Lord, amen. You say, just leave it alone, just preach the gospel. This is the gospel. And the church and the nations are in the plight because the world has told the church to shut up and we've decided there's no more time to be quiet. It's time to speak in the voice, amen. amen. Speak in the voice. Amen. And let God loose in the nations. I declare that Australia is in revival. Amen. Come on, this nation of Australia, we can look after our own patch here. I'm not in charge of Paris nor the Paris Olympics, but I am, we do have a voice in Australia. Yeah. Let's break it down. We do have a voice in the scenic rim, Logan. Amen. And we declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ over this land, that every point of confusion and deception and lies is broken in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As people respond to the love of God, as they receive the grace of God, as they receive mercy today. Come on, we're not, we're not smiting anybody. We're not condemning anybody. We're saying mercy, Lord, today for those men and women. Mercy for those officials today, Lord. Mercy for the nation of Australia. Mercy upon our nation, we pray. Mercy triumphs over judgment. We're not judging people. We're saying, God, mercy. Be merciful to this nation today. Pour your mercy out upon us today. Let people respond and be filled with the grace of God like never before. Father, we thank you today in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <sighs> Calm down, Errol. You weren't here last Sunday. I was just in your absence. I was saying, Calm down, Errol. Calm down. Oh, man. As we come to our giving this morning, who knows that God's great love is... Harvest Kids, thank you for the reminder. We do get excited here. God bless Harvest Kids today. Have a great day. My humble apology to you. Hallelujah. Harvest Kids are released. As we do that, we're going to receive our giving today. We're going to make room to pass the bags around. We'd always do this, but we do have online giving available for those people to do that way. The the slide on the screen. I want to read a verse to you this morning as we come to our time of giving. Romans chapter 8. But let's start at 31. Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? So listen, God's for us. God's for the nations. Amen. God's for you today. We heard it powerfully. So if that's true, He, God, who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all. Someone say, He's been delivered up for me. Talking about Jesus. Jesus was delivered up for me. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. It says that. It reads on. How shall He not with Him also freely give us some things? Oh, I'm glad you're reading your Bible today. It doesn't say some, does it? Come on, I know the religious people want to go, well, Pastor Mark, you know, you can't have all your wants. Yes, you well, he said that he, he supplies. Will he not, who freely gave up his only begotten son for humanity, whereby we can find salvation, will he not freely give us all, all things? Someone said, I receive all things today. Amen. So... All things represent all things that I need in my life to fulfill the God-given purpose and destiny for my life. Hallelujah. Listen, what you need is different from what I need. What you need is different to what the person beside you need. But today, it's all things that you need today has been provided. He didn't withhold His only begotten Son. He will not withhold from you. Hallelujah. So just ask, what do you need today? House and a bus. He's going on the road. A new ute. Someone shouted out, say, listen, come on. Listen, God is concerned with your physical well-being today. He's concerned with your coming and going. He's concerned with your walking and sleeping and eating and going to work life. Amen. As you yield and surrender to Him, He's concerned with that. That's why He said, I did not withhold my son from you. Will I not withhold from the, you the things that you need? And I'm clarifying it just for those who want a clarification, it's to do with your assignment and to do with your purpose in God, amen, to fulfill God's vision for your life. He's not withholding from you. Just take it by faith today and receive it, amen. So as you sow your seed this morning, as you give of your tithe into the storehouse, the place of, of food and nourishment for your life, it's biblical, amen. We're not under the law today, but we're under the grace of God. But this was before the law was given and still flowing today when the grace of God's flowing. We're talking about all things today. 
provided for you. Father, bless the givers today. Thank you for those that sow seed. Lord, abundantly supply their every need, we pray. Thank you for houses and land. Thank you for buses to go on the road. Whoa, yeah. I can see that. Tom and Greggy. Wheelchairs crushed by the bus. With a great light shining from heaven saying, Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and Jesus delivers. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for meeting every need in this house today. Every individual, every family, every family unit today, Lord, every business, I pray, Lord, untold blessing of God upon them. Lord, as they faithfully do what they've been instructed to do by the Holy Ghost today, thank you that you're meeting their every need in Jesus' name. Lord, let the, just the truth, the simple truth this morning, God's not withholding from you. He's not withholding from us today. And so, Father, we by faith take what's been blessed and given to us freely and we receive it in Jesus' name. We give you praise and honour. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise the Lord. God bless you, stewards, as you pass the bags around, those that are giving online now, later, and whenever you do it. God bless you this morning as you do that. Thank you, host, for receiving that today. Just a few things to talk about this morning before we come further around the Word of God today. Um, firstly, and very sadly, I want to make mention of the passing of Bruce Waldeck, who passed on Friday. And uh, very sad, quite sudden, really. He had not been well, been in hospital on the Gold Coast. And um, I spent a couple of hours with Alison on Friday. And uh, I just want to just acknowledge Alison and Waldeck and her family and um, her children and Bruce's children and, and the associated neighbours and the neighbourhood and the family of God here. We extend our condolences to Alison Waldeck today and um, with the passing of Bruce on Friday. And um, also our thoughts are with Jan Bond and Phil as they uh, come to the funeral on Thursday with the passing of Jan's mum uh, last Sunday, I believe. And uh, so Jan and Phil, our sympathy and our condolences are with you and the families associated as you celebrate the life of your mother this coming Thursday. God bless you and God's peace. Lord, we just pray for these families today. Lord, with the, the, the parting of loved ones, we pray, the, Lord, the compassion, Lord, the, the preciousness of the Holy Spirit to gather them in your arms today. Lord, when that loss happens and the, and, the, and, the, and the disappointment of the one passing, Lord, the grief. But Lord, we do know today for these ones, they're in a better place. Thank you for the plan of salvation. Thank you for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that's worked in their life so powerfully. Lord, we give you praise today. Lord, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so we honour the work of the gospel. Thank God for the hope we have. Thank God for salvation today. Lord, we pray comfort for these precious families. Lord, all the things that has to be done and worked out. Lord, we just pray the, 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 the grace of God upon their lives in a beautiful and a precious way. And we thank God for that today in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Hallelujah. I do believe the young adults or a number of them met last night with Rick and Faye at their establishment. Thank you, Rick and Faye, for uh, having them and hosting that. It was very uh, gracious of you to do that. But uh, Maddie wants to come and just make a brief announcement. I haven't forgotten about what's coming up with young adults and what they might want to be. Thank you very much. Morning, church. How are you? Um, Passing on an announcement. So next week we have a one of our fundraisers for our camp, um, which is happening at the end of September. Um, so next week we're having a op shop, and there's a bunch of other little things that are happening in there. Um, so op shop will be pay what you would like. Um, all of the items will be donated by the young adults. This is your bring stuff. Um, <laughs> they don't know yet. <laughs> Um, so, and even if any of the church members, you've got something to donate, if you can bring it to church by next Saturday, um, Ange and I are going to be going through that and sorting everything. Um, yeah, if you would, if you feel to bless a young adult and pay for a, one of them to go to camp, um, just 150 for, yes, <laughs> um, for each young adult, um, yeah, we can work out, um, how you'd like to do that. Um, but yeah, we just want to say thank you um, 
as on behalf of the Young Adult Ministry, thank you for your support um, over the last couple of years and um, thank you for your prayers as well for each of one of us as we continue to walk in what God's called us to do and we continue to um, to seek him first and to encounter him in fresh ways. So yeah, yeah. bless y'all. Yeah. Just just before you go, Maddie, um, just hold that. Is, uh, where is the camp? When is the camp? Yes. Please? Yep, so just in case there's young adults or there's other families here that want to share the word yep. of what you, what's happening. Sure. Um, so camp is happening from the 20th to the 22nd of September. So it's the last um, weekend of the school holidays. Um, we are heading up to the Sunshine Coast to Apex Camps, um, which is at Twin Waters, I think it is. Um, for an awesome couple of days. We've got a guest speaker coming. Um, we've got some guest young adults coming um, from another church up north. So we're super excited to um, meet with them and, and build fellowship with them. Um, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you want more information, um, come see me after church or um, head to our Facebook page, which is Uplifted Harvest Point Young Adults. Um, and yeah, we can get you, get you sorted. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie, for that. Awesome. You know, I want to just uh, congratulate, again, the young adults. Because, you know, it's even wonderful to have young adults who want to meet together every fortnight, get around the Word of God, have fun and fellowship together. Isn't that powerful? Absolutely. To have a bunch of people. And, you know, I, my heart is, I am thank God for these ones, but I know there's more, probably, or potentially that could be involved there. So that's why I'm just sort of laboring this point a bit. You can be involved. If you've got families here and you're working kids there, please send them to the camp or get involved with what God's doing. Listen, there's nothing like linking in. I don't know, someone yelled out this morning, we refuse to have pot plant Christians here. Are you with me? You know what I'm saying? You're just plucking all over the place, pluck here and a pluck there, and there's no root in you, but when life happens, someone say, life happens. Life happens. happens. You've got a support group or community around about you other than your flesh and blood family that can look after you and keep you strong. Isn't that powerful? I love the family of God, amen? And so I want to encourage you, I just thank God for these guys. They sit in the front here every week. They're an inspiration to me, the pastor. We thank God for every one of you, youth and young adults. We bless you today. Come on, let's give them a round of applause this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Ray Teese. Ray, we've got a hiking adventure coming up. And uh, we want to know, I think it's the uh, exhibition holiday for the Cynic Rim. Yes, we've got a, an adventure on Monday week, which is the, the public holiday in Bay Desert. It goes all the way to Brown's Plains. So it's going to be quite an adventure. It's one that you can't just do by yourself. So we're going, we, we've got a, a um, piece of paper up there to put some names in to get some idea how many people are coming. So we might, might need some drivers as well. Um, so the story is we're driving to the Lost World. If you haven't been to the Lost World, you should go. It's my, fa my father's favourite tour, tour drive when he's showing somebody around. Always took him up to the Lost World. And then we're going to walk from the w Lost World and come out at Rob Euston's place. Is he not here today? I don't think so. Mm. Um, at Rob's place, which is an adventure by itself, which is right at the top of Christmas Creek. And we're going to have a picnic at Stinson Park. Now, all those places are iconic tourist attractions. And if you haven't been there, we could use some drivers. So we'll probably sort it out next Sunday what we're going to do. And it actually dropped in my spirit just there before. When we get to the top of the Lost World, I think we might pray for the Lost World. Yeah. Pastor Mark. <laughs> I'll what be there. A, what a wonderful thing to do. Yeah. So it's a yeah area up here called the Lost World. It's a beautiful area. Just got uh, it's a gorgeous yeah gorgeous place. So it should be pretty good. Now it shouldn't be that arduous. I haven't been on it. So how far, Ray? How much hiking we're we doing? How long, roughly? How how far, Diane, from Steinhardt's to Rob Houston's house? Diane would have ridden a motorbike there in a day. No, I don't think it's that far. I think it's only probably a few K. Right. Two, it, three, four. Yeah, I, no, it probably wouldn't be four. Five. Two or three. Oh. Because we're going to actually... Someone shout, that's easy? Yeah, that's Someone shout, that's easy? Yeah. Well, you'll all be there, won't you? They actually cheated. They told me they, they've graded the road on this side. Right. Uh, yeah, that was cheating. No, like, they, that took some of the adventure out of it. <laughs> you still got to get up over the top. <laughs> right, what time, Monday? 
meeting here at 8 o'clock. Leaving here at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock Monday, Monday the 3rd, 12th. Monday the 12th of August, okay? On the public holiday. Praise God. Um, I'm not sure if Jake's here. No, he's just vanished from in, is he? Are you playing on the floor, Jake? <laughs> Teresa, do we have that bloke's advertisement that we shared last week? How many men want to go to um, Hannaford for the men's camp out there? The question is a bit about, um, I think you've got to bring a bed, mattress, swag, tent. There's no bed supply. There's no dormitories, no bunks. Um, you can bring a camping stretcher, but you've got to make your own way that way. Or bring the back of your truck to sleep in. Um, but we're going to go to a camp out there with the blokes. I'm not sure. We, have we found that? Is that good to go? It's, yep. It's on Friday, the 23rd of August to the 25th. Have we got it there? The men shear the sheep, live in mustard stock. The men culling out roots, we've been spraying the crops. We've been droving cattle up an old stock room. Now it's Saturday night. Last weekend in August. Sorry, girls, you can't come. <laughs> yeah. What a who day. Eh? We'll get Diane Audrey onto that. <laughs> so good, eh? Isn't it? Isn't life fun? Life's an adventure. So we give God praise, eh? Father, we thank you today. For this time together. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the life of God being real, relevant, and made alive to us today. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. A number of the ladies are out at St. George this weekend with um, Amber, Richardson, and Jesse. There's a women's conference on out there. And so, a number of the ladies, some of the ladies from here are out there. And uh, Pastor Grace, she's in Kananara with our daughter again up there, visiting with Amelia. And um, they've been at the Rodeo last night. The Kananara Rodeo was where they were. 
And uh, she sent me pictures of bucking horses and whatnot. Yee-haw. <laughs> Some more. So people are scattered everywhere, but who's ready for the Word of God today? Anybody? We've been talking about the unlimited language of the Holy Spirit. Someone say the unlimited language of the Holy Spirit. And for some, this is a topic that you are fully aware of, how it works, what happens. But I pray that over the last few weeks that something has resonated within you or something again has been refreshed and come alive on the inside of you. Because I think we all continually need refreshing of the Holy Spirit. There's a verse in Ephesians 5, I think it's verse 18. It says, do not be drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery, but be being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Be being filled. And it goes on to say, but speak in yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and making melody unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we made some melody unto the Lord this morning. But it's very clear that we need to be, the, the word be filled or be filled, be being filled is a, it's a continuous sense. So I've tried to build this concept that though you may have been filled with the Holy Spirit, when you got born again, someone say, I'm born again. And when that happens, if you're not born again today, you can be born again. You can allow God's Spirit into your life to touch you. He will come in. His love will permeate your life. He'll make you brand new on the inside. But what happens is God's Spirit joins Himself to your spirit. And you're identified as a son and a daughter of the living God. But we've been talking about an additional experience, which is very clear through the book of Corinthians, through the Gospels of John spoke about this to come, this evident, this event of the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the baptism. Matthew talked about it. John talking through Matthew. The one comes after me. He will baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. fire. We've had a vision this morning. Someone's seen fire on top of the heads of the church today. And you know, when you start to speak about these things and believe God for it, who knows it begins to manifest, begins to happen, doesn't it? And so I'm believing God. You see, why all this talk about tongues, Pastor Mark? Because I've found it to be a major key in my life. It's not a side thing. It's not just an additional, optional extra. It's something that I've welcomed with both hands in my open heart and said, God, I'll have all that you have for me. I'll receive it today. And I pray today, no matter what background you've come from, no matter what belief system has badgered you over time, some people have been taught it's passed away. Others have been taught it's of the devil. Others have been taught this and that, the other thing. And there's a worldwide move afoot to remove this from the church because it's not cool for you to be babbling in tongues. But can I tell you today that it is a power given to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ at the establishment of the church in the book of Acts, amen, where God said to the disciples, go wait for me in an upper room. Who knows we're not waiting anymore today, but you can just simply open your heart and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But he told the first disciples to go wait in the upper room. He said, you'll be endured. You will be clothed with power. Someone say, I want to be clothed with power. I want to be endured with power. From on high, hallelujah. And so we've spoken about all these things. We know that the Holy Spirit's more than tongues. We've talked about He's the advocate. He's the comforter. He's the the one that comes alongside. He's the strengthener. There's all these things. There's about eight things we can put in. But that doesn't depict it totally because it's un-sort of verbalized and you can't verbalize the full work of the Holy Spirit with just a few words. But someone say, I can receive it today, Amen. You can receive it by faith. So we've gone through a lot of things in the past weeks just to give those that are here maybe for the first time or to refresh you. But I want to say this today, that I believe that there's an overflowing happening. I think that was one of the words in the songs we sang this morning. Someone shout overflow. We had a conference earlier in the year at Easter and there used to be four called overflow. Overflow means to flow over the bounds. It means to fill us fill a space to capacity and spread beyond its limits. Hallelujah. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do to you today as a believer. He not only wants to just to part put himself in you, he wants to overflow you. Someone say, I'm going to overflow. I get you talking because you, you need to agree with the Word of God. Hallelujah. And just like my voice changes my world, your voice changes your world. Come on, the world's all set in place by a voice and thus the world that you expect to happen for you is changed by the words you speak. Hallelujah. So you can decide today, well, my life's been a bit dry. Perhaps there's been a few droughts, but I'm believing God today for overflow in Jesus' name. 
Someone shout, my life will overflow. Because the Word of God says, you will have what you say, amen. I'm not, having, I'm not having what you say about me or the paper says about me or an email says about me or that FB says about me. I'm having what God says and I'm having what I say about me happen in Jesus' name. Someone said, I'm going to overflow today because His Spirit lives in me. It means beyond the brim. It means beyond the banks and beyond the borders. And I'm praying today that the Holy Spirit in your life causes it to be above the brim, over the brinks and to spread out across the land, amen, to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. That not only does it affect you, it affects those around about you for His praise and His honour. Someone shout praise the Lord today. Woo, they're unlimited. And I've used this term because technically you can't limit what the Spirit of God can do in the life of a believer. We do, we think with our natural brain. Who knows that your brain is, the, sometimes it's your greatest asset. Who knows it can also be your greatest deficit. Is that right? Because it kind of, it can contradict the truth of God's Word or the, it puts limitations on what God wants to do. You'll hear people still today, Pastor Wendy, when you talks about their body or physical healing, and they'll go, well, bless God, you heal. They, and they'll say, yeah, I hope so. Or it's, it's coming. So they put a limit on it. You say, well, I haven't got the manifestation. You don't know what's happening inside me. I declare today by the power of the Holy Spirit that according to God's Word, you are already healed in Jesus' name. You say, Mark, that doesn't make sense to logic. No, it never does. That's why you need the Holy Spirit to make it, bring it to your reality, make it real for your life. You see, we never get past our brain if we just keep thinking with our brain. And if you look at the, the book of uh, Romans in Romans chapter 8, all through the book of, of Romans chapter 8, it uses the word spirit some 21 times. Wow. God's trying to tell us something. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a progression or it's comparing between living by the natural realm or the carnal or the natural mind versus the realm of the spirit. You see that? Hebrews 8.11, it's the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is going to raise up Pastor Greggy from the wheelchair, amen. It'll raise you up today. It'll loose off you the power of the enemy off your life. It didn't have any prerequisites or but ifs or maybe if you've been a good person, if you've been to church a few times or if you've said this or if you, you know what, it doesn't even say if, you, if you've forgiven everybody. It just says, if the same spirit that, I just put a bomb out there right there, something like the head spinning, whoa, come on, let me get, now we'll get some teaching on that another day. Someone say, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay because listen, God heals the non-believer and the believer. Mm, so you know what, Pastor, and I talk about this often on Sunday mornings early here at 5 a.m. Sin is not God's, not a problem. It's not even a problem for you, nor is it a problem for God because He sent Jesus Christ, amen, and defeated the power of the enemy off your life. That's why if the same Spirit, someone say Spirit, Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells in me. It's quickening and making alive my mortal body, hallelujah. By the same Spirit, the same resurrection power that pulled Christ from the grave. He was dead three days, hallelujah, but rose again glorious and triumphant. Well, that ability not only is for my spirit, it's for my physical well-being as well. Anyone catching this this morning? I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Sometimes it happens like Eric said. It happens today. It happens tomorrow. Jesus said, as you go, you're healed. So I'm not boxing that. So don't come at me like... "Mm." People do. You don't understand. I didn't finish the whole story. I'm just touching little bits here and there. Someone say, it's my message. Someone say, the Spirit of God lives in me. Quickly, Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah. Let me just read this. Ah, where's Acts? <laughs> Acts. I found it, page 958. <clears throat> it says, when the day of Pentecost, oh, I hope I get to some points today. 
I got one point last week. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and it sat upon each of them. Hallelujah. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were there dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, someone say the sound. There's a sound occurred. The multitude came together and they were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born in? Parthenians, Midians, Elamites, and dwelling, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Pythagora, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, and adjoining Cyprus, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Hallelujah. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? Others mocking said, They are full of new wine. Then Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. These are not drunk as you suppose, since it's only the third hour or the ninth, at nine o'clock in the morning. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel that shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision and your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my maidservants, upon my uh, men servants and maid servants, I'll pour out my spirit in those days. Hallelujah. And we could read on, but let's stop right there. Someone shout, these are those days. Hallelujah. These are those days when God's Spirit is being poured out upon all flesh to the glory of God. And so we've been sharing of these powerful, powerful truths. I want to just to back up to that part there this morning to get, we've been looking at benefits of speaking tongues. We got point one. Last week, it reveals the mysteries or the hidden counsel of God to a person's life. Someone said it reveals mysteries. And the hidden counsel of God. We're talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whoa, hallelujah. Someone shout number two. We won't go back out that one. Last, number two, it helps us in our weaknesses. Someone say, it helps me in our weaknesses. Anyone had any weaknesses at all? Anyone felt weak at all at any point or time in your life? It helps us. In our weaknesses, Romans 8, 26 says this, we don't know how to, likewise the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know how we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The TPT says it this way, in a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us Someone say the Holy Spirit takes hold of us. You see, it's not just about learning a few verses. It's not just about, it's about the Holy Spirit taking hold of us, taking hold of our being. It says the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty. People talked about the frailty of humanity this morning to empower us in our weakness. Woo! Someone say, I've been empowered today. In my weakness. You know, I, 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 also, this is another thing. It does grieve me sometimes when you see people saying, well, I'm just feeling very weak right now. And I want to ask them, have you been praying in the Holy Spirit? Just a question. As a hint to say, well, that would help you in your weakness and it would strengthen your life. This is what the verse is saying. Someone say, the Holy Spirit will help me in my weakness. It reads on, for example, at times we don't even know how to pray or the best thing to ask for, but the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional, with emotional size too deep for words. Hallelujah. You know what? This praying in the Holy Ghost, it gives you an extreme advantage. Did you hear that? Someone say, I've got extreme, 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 
extreme advantage. I've picked up, and I shared this a few weeks ago, but I'll bring it again, this point. Point number two, I, I preach like a fat man caught in a barbed wire fence. <laughs> a point here and a point there. No, 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 I'm not fat. I'm not fat. I'm a skinny man. Who gets caught in a barbed wire fence on a point here and a point there? Oh, man, behave yourself. Come on, focus. <laughs> Someone say, I have extreme advantage. We might get two done, you never know. Extreme advantage. Likewise, the Spirit helps our weakness. The word weakness is also translated infirmities. I said the other day, infirmities means, from the original language, it means it or denotes a crippling disease. It also speaks of an incurable disease. It also can refer to a recurring plague. It can also mean a mental oppression or simply a terminal condition. Hallelujah. Who knows that God by His power has linked us in with the mighty Holy Ghost and has given us a a solution and an antidote to crippling diseases, an antidote to incurable diseases, an antidote to incuring plagues, that thing that keeps coming back and back and back again, mental oppression or terminal condition. God's given us help in our infirmities. He's given us help in our weaknesses. Someone said, well, someone needs to give that interpretation. Well, bless God, just receive of His grace today. Receive of His life today because He wants to revigorate you and revitalize you by His Spirit as you pray personally to Him by the unction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Is that good today? Someone say today, He helps us in our weaknesses. I wanted to read to you Ephesians 3.16. We've talked about this a couple of times. Ephesians 3.16, before you divert to the next one, it says, I pray then that out of the wealth of His glory, He grant you to be mightily strengthened by His Spirit in the very core of your being. Who likes that verse? Anybody? Someone say, I'm being strengthened today. Actually, in fact, I've been mightily strengthened today. Yeah, in the core of my being. Another translation, the Jordan translation says this, I beg Him to give you out of His glorious abundance the power to win by His Spirit ruling your inner life. Is that good? Someone say, God's Spirit is going to rule my inner life. The Dodds translation says this, out of those redundant stores of goodness in his gracious heart, which can never be exhausted, to be mightily strengthened by the effectual operation of his spirit, which brings invigorating and increasing every grace and carrying on his work with abundant success in the inner man. I know it's a lot of words to capture in one moment or one breath, but can you let the Holy Spirit just settle it in your heart if it lands, amen? Let it touch your life in a powerful way. The Waith Mouth translation says, to be strengthened by Spirit with power penetrating to your innermost being. I've just realized that we have a unlimited source of God's power on the inside of us. And it is awakened and it is aroused after it's been received of. It's awakened and aroused and stirred up within you as you begin to pray intimately with the Holy Spirit through a heavenly prayer language. Amen. We're not talking about just babble, though they may call us the babbling, tongue-talking Pentecostal Christians, but I've just decided in my heart, being raised this way, that it's something that we will not back back away from, but we will actually pop the clutch. I heard the bloke say that one day. Pop the clutch. As us, I know it's a bit of a blokey thing here. We've got chainsaws and men flipping tires. And sorry, girls, the girl thing's happening in St. George this weekend. (laughs) We're popping the clutch here in Bow Desert today. How many girls like to pop the clutch? 
Anybody? Can I quick put your hands up if you, if you like just, what I mean is you like to just pop the clutch, throw it back a gear and just send it. Is that right? Do you like doing that? I know Lenny does. She's got a V8 under the bonnet. Boom. Yeah. But I'm talking about your life spiritually. I'm talking about your journey, your, your purpose, the God, the walk. The, you see, you don't have to just drudgingly go along. And we're building this, this thought, these truths. Yes, we're doing it week after week after week because I know just listening to conversations, I just smiled at the Pastor Errol this morning and said, did you hear that? Not a criticism of anybody. Just uh, You hear things, you go, oh my gosh, we're still not getting this. Because it's got to come, not just I know the Bible verses, but it's got to become the Holy Spirit will make it your reality. Yeah. Can you see the difference? It's not that I know what Acts chapter 2 says, but I want this to be my reality so that when the chips are down and the body's not performing correctly and the bad news comes or the relationship has a tension or someone pikes out and does something silly. It's about the inner strength of the indwelling Holy Ghost is on the inside of you and you've got something to draw from. I'm helping your church say you have something to draw from. It's called the inner strength of God's power and God's glory and He doesn't leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. And you stir him by praying a little. You hop up in the morning and say, Whoa, ta nando, seki nanda, nando, lemenda. And your wife or your husband, whatever your way it was, or your children, what did you say? I said, Mando, none of your business. I told him, I love you too. <laughs> I'm not being rude about it. I'm just saying, Come on. I just, no, you've got to grab this church. Someone say, I'm going to grab it today. Come on, it's real. I'm so alive today as I was when I got born again, when I was a teenager, I mean, something's alive. It's actually got more alive on the inside of me. You don't decline into oblivion, but something comes alive. You say, Muh. more than ever, more than ever. When we see the decline and the depravity and the bad news that's happening, we need a voice on the inside, amen, that can strengthen you in your weak times and help you. It gives you extreme advantage to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Number three, someone say number three. Say, whoa, we're on a roll now. Number three. Number three, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, what it does to you, the benefit, it stimulates faith and stirs faith up. Someone say it stimulates faith and stirs faith up. I didn't say gives you faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. Amen. But tell what, say it stimulates the faith on the inside because you've stopped listening to your natural mind, which says you're hurting. That's not working out. How will you survive up there? Where's the money coming from? I'm stimulating my faith on the inside of me so that my Spirit dominates my life and my soul becomes aware of the truth of what God's Word says about me. Otherwise, the circumstances are screaming at you. I hope you can feel me today because it happens to us all, amen. And this, Pastor Mark, Monday morning has got to be so pratala mandi ki under. Tuesday, nando kala pa pratala barando. Ese kiri under. La 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 la. Chata na mo kambare teribida. La 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 la. Nando kili me no so kombra tala baranda. Yeto salamanda. What am I doing? I'm, you know what? It stimulates faith. And what am I going to say when I pray in tongues? I don't know. That's why it takes faith to pray in the Holy Ghost. I didn't give you the Bible verse, did I? I must come back to the Bible. Jude 20. Someone say Jude 20. But you, Harvest Point Church family, and those watching on live stream this morning, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith. Make progress. Someone say make progress. Rise like an edifice higher and higher and higher by praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, so you can come with your lies and your religious whatever they've told you. And I'll just say, Jude 20, have a read. Do you want to argue with the Bible or what? <laughs> Someone say, 
I have faith stimulating. Come on, we've all had stuff happen, haven't we? Who knows that there's things that have happened, things have gone wrong, things you never expected, things you weren't even expecting. You're believing for the other, other thing, but you've got to get your, get your spirit and start to let it dominate your life to overcome the thinking in the soul realm, amen, by building yourself. Stir faith, stir it up and build faith, build it in your life. Yeah. Ah. Hmm. Praying in the Holy Ghost, yielding to the faith of God. You see, when I begin to pray in tongues, for those who have never prayed in tongues, and the gift is for all, all who would receive it, amen? In Acts chapter 2, in the upper room, it says, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance, Amen. Someone said, I'm all. I'm, I'm sorry, I clarified. I'm part of the all. Is that better? Grade 10 kicks in sometimes, and I need to grab something else from the Holy Ghost. Amen. You know what? Let me just say this. Stop it. This is a miracle. What you are witnessing, both in your own life and in my life, is a miracle. I've told the story before, and my mum and dad can vouch for mum and dad. Give them a wave. If you're new here, welcome, mum and dad. That's my parents right there. If you're new, visiting, that's them. Go, go see them right there. Give them another wave. Quick, they're looking. Everyone's looking. That's David and Norma Ironside. Senior Ironsides. History makers. Legacy setters. Kingdom shakers. For the glory of God. Hallelujah. What was I going to say about that? It's a miracle. That's right. It's a miracle, it's a miracle because I was quiet, shy, introverted, squeaky mouse, wouldn't say boo. I told the story, I'll tell it again, how I joined the Black Hall, which is Western Queensland Polo Cross Club, to join and play polo cross, not polo, the polo cross, the country men's Western. <laughs> Woo, pick up in the net and carry it and flick it to another bloke. Woo! Off the horse like that. Anyway, I was so quiet that they asked me to come on the committee. And I went, woo! And we went to the Black Hall Club. It was like, woo, the Black Hall Club. Yeah, don't go to the club, do we, Dad? Mum. They never taught me to go to the club. I've joined the Black Hall <laughs> Polo Cross and I'm now at the club having a Coke. I was. I didn't drink. <sighs> I don't need to. Just have water and Coke. No, I don't have Coke anymore. That's bad for the... <laughs> anyway, I was so reserved and so quiet that I'd sit there and for weeks I went and they'd say, oh, you got anything to say, Mark? I said, mm -mm. <laughs> No. Because I was too scared to hear my own voice. And too scared to speak in case I said something, that'd be silly. That would sound dumb. Serious? It's not a joke? Yeah. It's crazy. What happens? Someone said, what happened? It's Jesus. But you know what Jesus gave me? The Holy Spirit of God. Because Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Father. I received Jesus, but he gave me the comfort and the Holy Ghost. He gave me boldness. Amen to get a handle on what we're about as believers, amen, and something comes alive and you've got to keep the wood on the fire. So stop babbling, Pastor Mark. Talk English. I'm not talking to you right at this moment. I'm talking to the Holy Ghost. Almighty, amen. But what happens is something energized, something changes on the inside and you lose. See, listen, the Holy Spirit will take over your personality. Mm. Someone say, oh, this is just the way I am. You've got to <laughs> like it or lump it. Mm. No, no, I've changed. Someone said, I've changed. Someone say, for you, you're cha I'm changing. Now, well, maybe tap the person beside and say, then you're changing. I'm changing. Mm. <laughs> is this okay? Is it helping someone this morning? Come on, this is, a, this is a weakness for me. 
Come on, you've got your journey, your story. You have had your weakness or your story. This is my story. And you know what? Before I got to that place of the Polar Cross Committee Room, I used to stutter. Da, 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 da. Hmm. Not making fun of because I did it. As a boy, Mama sent me to tuition. Is that right? Bit of extra something, speech, or, you know, there was a few things that happened back in those latter primary school days where Mama helped me out, amen? But you know what? They prayed for me. They said, son, because she had a vision. Mama, sorry, not she, mum, Norma, had a vision of giving birth to me and said, this boy will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So as I'm going, you know, half couldn't talk probably. She says, this boy will speak the gospel of Jesus Christ. She didn't say he was going to be a stutter for the rest of life. She said, no, he's got the power of the Holy Ghost living inside of him. We're talking about, well, come on, we've heard about how Eric got turned away. We've heard about how Tom got turned away. We're hearing about, we're seeing Greg get turned away. You all here today are being turned around by the power of the Holy Ghost. You need to give him honour today. You give him glory. He'll help you in your weakness. Hallelujah. Hmm. Whew. Calm down. We're up number two. Preaching like a fat man caught in a barbed wire fence, a point here and a point there. We're up to number two. Three. We've got three pricks now. I mean, three points, you know, of the barbed wire. I'm sorry, you got pricked by the barbed wire. What are you? Calm down, you blokes. Lord, help. Just pray for them boys over there. Stretch your hands towards them. Say, Lord, redeem them now in Jesus' name. Someone say, Someone say, someone say, praying in the Holy Ghost. Someone say, praying in the Holy Ghost stimulates faith and stirs up faith. Hallelujah. I said before, it's an act of faith. It helps us trust the Spirit of God more fully on what to say. As I prayed in the Holy Spirit, because it's a, I don't know what I'm going to say, right? As you start to step out in your life, it gives you confidence to say, I don't know what I'm going to say, but the Holy Spirit, because after praying in the Holy Ghost, I've stirred up this faith ability to say, I'm going to step out and say something. The Holy Spirit's going to fulfill my mouth. I'm going to give voice to you. You're going to give your tongue, give your voice, Vox, to the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But you're going to put it out there. Hallelujah. Woo! So it helps you in life, in speaking out. Someone said, what's all this laughing? Joy's breaking out today. Come on, Christianity is not depressing. More depression for you today. It's another day of blessing. We said God is good this morning. We talked about the goodness of God. It's another day of joy and gladness, of victories. We're getting victory today by praying in the Holy Ghost. That's how you just pull it out of the bog, Errol. I know exactly what's going on. <sighs> Faith is an act. More, Lord, over there. Do you know what? You will need joy this week. Back to your notes, Mike. No, no, you'll need joy this week. Come on, no, people, the Christian church has got so serious and so boring. That's why Sandy saw... People coming to the fire. We'll say they're not here this morning. There's a few away, a few traveling St. George's. There's a few. As you bring your friends and as you are touched by the fire of God, as you stir up, I'm not talking about just getting tongues for the sake of a religious experience. I'm talking about tongues that change your life. Amen. Brings the mystery of God to your life. It gives you the downloads of heaven and it causes you to be strong in faith. It helps you in weaknesses. Amen. Builds you up. Woo! Yeah. Who wants number four? Can we get four out? Has, oh, look at the time. Did someone get up there and just turn the clock like that? Man, we got two points done. I'm proper stuck in the fence. We did one last week, remember? <laughs> Do you want number four? Yes. No, Rick's nodding. He wants to go home. I saw it. He's with. 
Oh, I feel it coming, Rick. <laughs> Boom. Lord, oh, touch him with joy today. Overflowing, he's laughing now. <laughs> Maggie's going to help me out. She's saying, let it rise, Lord, let it rise. Up, up, up. Little Maggie's helping me preach over there. Thanks, Maggie. Oh, I should wrap it up. No, look, it's, it's cup of tea time. I'll be in overtime if I keep going. <laughs> oh, you could come back next week. Who can come back next week and bring a friend? I've got some really important things to tell you. I've got a, oh, I didn't get to what we talked about through the week. That's still coming. Is that all right? Okay. So I say, we, well, well, I do talk through the week with some of you. I do. Hmm. <laughs> How about we stand this morning? I'm going to stop. It's 11 past the finishing time. Pooh, more, Lord. Jesus, more, more. And for you, Tilly. Fire. Oh, of the Holy Ghost. Lord, refresh her today. Lord, stir up those heavenly language. Stir it up, Father. Stir it up, 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 stir it up. Stir it up today. Father, rekindle the flame of the fire of the Holy Ghost in Tilly right now in Jesus' name. Let it burn, Lord, uncontrollably. She's going to mark here. Whoa, whoa, woman, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? Woo! Stop. Fire! Oh, the Holy Ghost goes right through you in Jesus' name. More for Wendy. Fire! Fire! The Holy Ghost goes through you right now in Jesus' name. Strengthen this man, Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord. He's drawn upon you all these years, 50 plus years of knowing Jesus. Father God, we thank you for the strength of God today. Rekindle that fire, I pray in Jesus' name. Rekindle the fire of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Strengthen Cyril right now, we pray. In the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Mandor, come and just pray in the Holy Ghost. If you do, just pray right now. Some of you are just going to receive it right now as I'm praying right now. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, as Peter's preaching, the Holy Ghost fell upon them and they received the Holy Ghost and began to pray in other tongues by the Spirit as the Spirit of God ministered to them. Some of you need healing today. Come on, some of you need strength in your soul right now. Some need a miracle in their body right now. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Receive it today by faith in Jesus' name. The power of heaven is here today to heal you and set you free. He's lifting depression on people right now. He's lifting anxiety today off your life as you launch out by praying in the Holy Ghost. Stir it up, stir it up in Jesus' name. Landor, come on, just pray. Just pray. All of us praying together in the Holy Ghost. Everyone together. You're speaking to God, not to man. Activate it, stimulate it right now. He is the person of the Holy Spirit, amen. He comes to reside within you, to lead you and guide you, to equip you, to value, to enable you today. One quick story, hold it. Listen, one quick story. I heard a story recently. There's this dear, precious lady. She was dying of a terminal disease, cancer. And she had hands laid on it. She'd been to healing meetings. She'd getting prayed for, getting prayed for, getting prayed for. And, and the, and the, and the uh, invitation was given to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in tongues. So she said, oh, I'll have some of that too. So she's believing God for a, a miracle that had not yet manifested. She came forward, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire with the evidence of tongues. And she was instantly healed as she began to pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. She got checked by the doctor and there was no trace of the disease left in her body. It's a true story. Amen. It's a true legitimate story. It happened. She was not receiving a healing, but she said, I'm going to receive the Holy Ghost today. And the power of God hit her. It says like she fell. She fell. Knelt down, this is the story, just come back to the rest of it. She knelt down, laid down on the floor, had her head under a chair, the pew, and as she did that, a light from heaven, like a lightning bolt, came from heaven and poof, into her head like that. That's the vision she had, and she was healed from that moment on. Receiving tongues and the Holy Ghost, amen. Come on, stir it up right now. Brato. Some of you need healing for your children, for your family right now. Come on, relationships today are being healed today. 
Marriages are being restored today. Hallelujah. Life is coming back into it right now in Jesus' name. Oh, I didn't do this, did I? Hold on. We're going to sing in a moment. Some of you are new here today. They said, what's the chainsaw for, Pastor Mark? Years ago, my son, my flesh and blood son, Matthew, was taught to use a chainsaw. He helped me cut scrub to feed the cattle. And I, being a loving father, didn't send him off with a chainsaw. I said, okay, son, away you go. And he's out there like this. Are you watching me? I'll show you this side. He didn't go chainsaw. He'd go, mm, oh, man, Dad. This. Meanwhile, I'm just carving trees up over this other side, feeding the cattle. I didn't do that. I said, son, this chainsaw has a motor. It's called power. And it'll assist with the task at hand. It will assist with the responsibility you have to live life well with the things of God. And I didn't teach my son to use a chainsaw like a cross cut. I taught him to use it like a chainsaw, which means you start the motor, you start the motor and you let the motor do the work. You let the power of God do the work through your life. Amen. It would be a cruel father if he said, okay, go be a Christian. Away you go. But he didn't give us that. But he didn't give us that. He gave us the motor. He gave us the power. Acts 1.8 says, you shall be endured with chainsaw power. No, no. He said, you'll be endured with the Holy Ghost and power to help you be a witness for me. Amen. Amen. I'm going to start this bad boy just so you can get a few fumes. Oh, sorry, Kerry. Yeah. I taught my son how to start the chainsaw. And God give you an experience called the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which means start your engines, ladies and gentlemen, because He's given you an ability to live life to the fullest. Hallelujah. Stir up faith. Come on, strengthen you in weak times. Hallelujah. Give you downloads. Woo! I've got to give the youth a bit of fumes over here before I go. That's why I bought the chainsaw. Because it's the power representative of the power of the Holy Ghost in a believer's life. Come on, it's available for you today. Come on, friend, today, this week, whatever task and job and duty you have on hand to do, start the engine of the Holy Ghost and stir it up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. You know, before we sing the last song, if you're here today, friend, you don't know Jesus Christ. This gift is available for those who have been born again. Those who have said yes to the saving grace. I know the time's gone. Lucky I stopped at point three, eh? You'd be grateful now. But the grace of God's available for you, for your family, for those who are in the best. A number of people last Sunday received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. Today, you may be here, friend, may have been born with a friend, say, I've never heard such. Wow, this place is, woo! Yeah, you can be a part of this. It's not a secluded family. It's not just for a certain few. It's for all those who would come. All those who would say, yes, Jesus, I want you in my heart and my life. So if you're a friend who's never received Jesus Christ, never been born again, you don't know if you're to die tonight, whether you go to heaven. 
Bruce passed away on Friday. He knew of his Saviour, Jesus Christ. And today he's in glory. That's the confidence we have in the Gospel, the message of Jesus Christ. That's the confidence, that's the hope we have, amen. Friend, if you haven't got that hope today, you can have it today by simply, I want to just ask you to raise your hand, say, Pastor Mark, I'd like to receive Jesus. I'd like to acknowledge Him as my Saviour, my Lord, my Redeemer, my Forgiver. All those big words we use as a Christian. But you know what? They're real words and they have depth of meaning and they're powerful. If you believe in Him today, the Bible says, and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. For with the heart, a man or woman believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. If that's you, friend, quickly raise your hand. People do this every week here and they do it throughout the course of the week through the life of Harvest Point Church family. If you're here today, friend, you've never responded to Jesus, quickly raise your hand right now. Shelly Emmanuel at the markets, they were there on Saturday and there were people responding to Jesus Christ. People were hearing the message at the markets and Bethesda. Thank you, Shelly Emmanuel. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody today, friend, receive Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's great. We're all safe here today. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God praise right now. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. One more thing. I'll just keep you on toes. One more thing. Tonight, 6 p.m., we're praying for revival in Australia. We're praying for revival. I had to take Gracie to the airport last Sunday night. That's where I was. She's been to Kununurra. She'll be back this week. You guys had a wild time with Kayla, I heard. And you all participated as well. Lenny just passed on thanks to Kayla. Maybe she's watching online today. God bless her. Anyway, come and partner with us tonight and believe God, amen. I said just for now, I know Carla said we can go longer because Pastor Mark won't mind. I heard that on the grapevine. <laughs> but anyway, tonight, someone say tonight. 6 p.m. for an hour's prayer meeting of revival for Australia, amen. Come on, just, just worship God in your heavenly language as you go today. If you need a fresh touch or refreshing, quickly come today or just raise your antennas in the air and say, God, I received the fresh. I receive a fresh touch today of your spirit. We're not finished this series yet. We're going to keep going. So come back next Sunday, bring a friend. The chainsaw will be here and we'll give another rev. God bless you. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. I've got joy, joy, joy down in my heart. I've got joy, joy, joy down in my heart. I've got joy, joy, joy down in my heart.